My guest today is Henrik Fisker. Last time I talked to him was at a CES in Vegas, uh, where they unveiled uh, the E-Motion, that beautiful car right there, and kind of stole all the limelight. But today I want to talk to him about uh, solid-state batteries. This is something that Fisker is pioneering. They filed for a patent uh, last year with a really, really promising uh, uh, outcome. And uh, it looks like it might happen sooner rather than later. And, you know, a lot of people actually argue that the reason... Uh, a lot of people are hesitant to adopt the electric cars is because of the limitations that the batteries have. And right now, most, actually all pretty much uh, electric cars use lithium ion technology. And, you know, we all know the limitations there. Now, the solid state technologies and maybe even supercapacitors is a technology that people are um, uh, definitely looking forward to. And I thought who would be the better person to have than Henrik Fisker himself to t uh, tell us a little bit more about that uh, and most importantly educate us on some other things that are uh, working on that are very exciting. So we're going to talk about it all coming up next. If you're watching me live on Patreon, thank you so much for supporting the show. If you uh, want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash e4electric. If you're watching me on YouTube, Please consider subscribing so you don't miss anything moving forward. And of course, amazing guests like uh, Henrik and many other different news and on location reports are awaiting for you guys. I produce a video every day. All right. So Henrik Fisker uh, is uh, once again uh, talking to me about some exciting technology. Today, we want to talk specifically about uh, solid state technology, uh, solid state battery technology. And so without further ado, Henrik, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's exciting to be here. Well, so last time we talked, and this was at the CES in Vegas, and obviously all the hype went to Emotion, your new uh, uh, four-door all-electric sedan. And I've been really excited to see uh, everything that you post in your social media with this. But um, there was something else that was on display there, kind of got overlooked, but some may argue is, you know, possibly the future of electric cars. And I'm talking about solid-state batteries. Can you... Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what are the current limitations of the status quo of lithium ion batteries and why do you think and do you think that solid state batteries is the future? Well, first of all, yeah, they were they were overlooked because, of course, they're not uh, so exciting to look at a battery. It's not very sexy, but uh, it's in the battery that's exciting. And uh, I think that ultimately we will move from the traditional lithium ion batteries today, which have, of course, liquid electrolyte in them to full, full solid state battery technology. And the reason is that that is really what's needed to take the electric vehicle beyond the internal combustion engine in, in pretty much everything, whether it's performance, cost or safety. So um, now there are some benefits and not actually a lot of benefits for solid state batteries. And um, can you tell me what they are? Well, so the benefit for solid state, of course, first is that they're solid, which means that they don't have the uh, liquid electrolyte inside them, which means that they're inherently safer. Uh, also, uh, our solid state battery uh, doesn't have uh, the issue with overheating. And the adva advantage with that is that you can charge them much, fa much faster. And also, we don't need a, a very complicated battery pack or the battery enclosure with very complicated uh, active cooling systems. Uh, and that is a big advantage cost-wise. Uh, and of course, also, they're safer. Uh, so the safety you have to create around the battery, once you have them in a vehicle or another product, is much less. Uh, on our particular our solid state battery, we have advanced in a couple of other areas, which has uh, been the issue with solid state battery research so far, what we have seen so far in solid state batteries. And that is we have been able to uh, create a solid state uh, bulk three dimensional battery, where we are using a very unique manufacturing methods, which is easy for scale up and it's low cost as well as the materials we have in uh, in the solid state battery our solid state battery is low cost so we are expecting uh, the actual cost uh, on a cell level to be uh, uh, well below uh, 100 dollars a kilowatt hour so that's also a, a very important thing and then of course the last point which has traditionally been an issue with the first solid state batteries that's been developed 
has been they don't uh, all all the sofa that has been developed they have had issues with working below zero celsius uh, and we have uh, actually in our battery we have already tested it to minus 37 degrees celsius and of course that is a necessity when you're when you're putting them into a vehicle now the headlines that you made uh, a few months ago is that as you patented your technology that uh, it's possible to charge uh, a car for 500 mile range in one minute and um, is this still a plan for you guys and when do you think that might we might see it in in one of your products so well we have to understand that to charge a vehicle you also need the availability of the electricity to be able to have that much electricity go into the battery that fast that's the one side the other side is that uh, you would have to make some compromises in the energy density uh, uh, if you want to get down to one minute. So most likely we will not, we will not use the one minute charge for our vehicle, but it's possible to do it, for instance, in, in other type of batteries for phones, et cetera. Uh, we will probably still be able to ch uh, charge our battery in, uh, it's uh, hard to say what the final time will be, but for sure, even with a minute or two, you will get quite a lot of energy in the battery, a lot more than you do today. So our goal is, that you should be able to charge our vehicle as fast as you can fill up a car with gasoline. That means we're looking at about five minutes uh, for a decent charge that will at least get you a couple of hundred miles worth of charge. Uh, so that's something we're finalizing right now. And one of the reasons we're looking into not necessarily going for the extreme fastest charge is that there wouldn't be uh, supercharged or ultra chargers available enough of them to give us the benefit of that. Uh, so what we are going for right now is the ultimate energy density in our battery. And the reason is that allows us to reduce weight dramatically. We're looking at reducing the weight uh, uh, at least, or hopefully uh, at least uh, about a hundred percent. So if you can get half the weight of what you have today with the same energy density or the same energy in a battery, that would be a huge advantage because obviously it uh, creates uh, a more uh, efficient vehicle ultimately. Do you think you might be the first to market with this uh, technology? Well, we are, I'm pushing our scientists to get to market in 2020. Uh, we are building batteries as we speak, smaller batteries. Uh, we are looking to put some larger scale batteries, larger format cells into a pack and into a vehicle already next year for testing. Uh, right now, of course, it's all lab testing and bench testing. Uh, and so my goal is to have launched the Fisker Emotion now with solid state batteries in 2020, sometime in 2020. And we are really uh, going to, if, if we get close enough to that goal, we will actually um, fit the launch date of the Fisker Emotion to the launch date of the solid state batteries. So we may be the first in the world to actually put solid state batteries into a vehicle on, on a you know, for sale on the road. So that's news to me. I was under the impression that uh, eMotion was still going to have the lithium ion batteries. Um, are you saying that you might actually uh, uh, be fast enough to, to, to produce that car, the eMotion, with the solid state batteries after all? What, yeah, what I'm saying is that we have, that is our backup plan to use lithium ion batteries. However, we have advanced faster than we expected with the solid state battery technology. Uh, and I, as I said, we're already building battery cells right now. And uh, it kind of points to that there is a possibility that we can launch the emotion with solid state batteries in 2020. And I know you were talking about about 400 mile range, uh, even with the lithium ion batteries, do you think it will actually grow uh, if you're able to uh, put the solid state batteries in there? Well, the 400 mile range were actually with lithium ion batteries that we had created a lot of space in the Fisker Emotion for that. So with the solid state batteries, we can do a lot more than that. The question, I guess, will really be, and we're sort of trying to do a little internal research to figure out what is, what is the range compromise you want to do with size and weight. I mean, if we use the current uh, size that we have in the Emotion, uh, we would be able to get quite a lot of range, easily over five or 600 miles. The question is, what trade-off do you do? The more, of course, uh, range you put in, the more expensive it is, the more heavy it is. Uh, 
uh, I'm thinking 500 mile range would give us quite a long distance to any competitor. Uh, maybe enough for most people, but there's also a possibility we will maybe do a small limited, small limited run uh, with even higher range than that. Uh, so that's something we'll be looking at, and making some decision on later this year. You're also working on a, a, a an autonomous, uh, fully autonomous vehicle. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we're working on a on an autonomous shuttle without a steering wheel. Uh, what's a little different to this shuttle versus when you read about autonomous privately owned vehicles or robo taxis going around in traffic is that this will be slightly more controlled. We're looking at a controlled set route for the shuttle, uh, also low speed. Um, so, uh, and it won't be privately owned. It will be operated uh, as a fleet of shuttles. We'll uh, generate quite a lot of data from that. And we already have some, some very good partners for this. Uh, we see the deployment of this shuttle more on corporate technology campuses, um, college campuses, uh, potential more sort of register, sort of, uh, uh, I would say areas where you have a little more control. It could be, for instance, a parking lot going where you, where you park somewhere and you need to go, for instance, to a park that's a little further away or very sort of, simple routes that is defined and we can put the shuttle on. So that's kind of what we are planning with the shuttle. And we are also planning to, I think, put a little more emphasis on sort of the, uh, the, the feeling you have when you're in that shuttle, when you see the shuttle, I think it should go beyond just basic boring transportation. If we truly are to migrate to spend more of our time in, in these sort of semi uh, public transportation vehicles, then I think it should be a little more fun, a little more involvement in the design, and 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 it should it should just feel better to be on board in those shuttles that what I've seen so far. So that's kind of why we decided to get into to the shuttle concept. The, the second point would be that I think in the future, you know, uh, car companies as we see them existing today is is probably going to disappear. I think we are all going to move into becoming sort of mobility companies in the sense that we're going to be offering uh, a certain experience that reflects, there's a reflect reflection on your brand. And that experience will definitely have to go beyond the privately owned cars. I don't think privately owned cars will disappear, but I think we will be using them probably less than 50% of what we use them today. And then we're going to use other means of transportation and, Fisker or uh, Inc. We will be part of those other means. Do you think that the recent event and accidents with uh, with Uber and, and Tesla had kind of set the autonomous uh, uh, driving movement back, or do you think this is just a temporary setback? Well, I think it has opened up a discussion about uh, how close is technology is this technology, and also a discussion maybe we haven't had too much about is is where does it make sense to deploy this technology. And I'm not so sure that right now or in the foreseeable future within the next five years, for instance, that it makes sense to sell level five autonomous vehicles to private people or, or deploy them on public roads where they will encounter situations that is very unusual and unpredictable. Uh, so I think the autonomous shuttle is, is for me a more valid solution where you have shuttles running, you know, 18, 20 hours a day, you know, seven days a week, uh, you're able to uh, program an extremely smooth ride. You're able to program a route, a set route, uh, that's going to be less surprises. And uh, also, of course, uh, you, you know, if you're deploying a shuttle seven days a week, 18 hours a day, that is a lot of drivers uh, you need for that. And you may potentially even have tired drivers at night and so on. So I think that uh, you're you're gonna have, there's gonna be areas where maybe today you can't afford to deploy these shuttles, where you now can afford it. Uh, so you're gonna offer more access for people. Um, and the other thing is, of course, without having the, the sort of big driver environment. Uh, and by the way, we're also moving away from the motors being inside the vehicle. We're putting in wheel motors, so we are maximizing the interior space in the shuttle. Um, so I think that there's a lot of advantages where autonomous uh, electric shuttles 
that uh, we will see coming to life over the next couple of years. But I don't think it's going to be level five privately owned cars or unmanned taxis driving around in complicated traffic situations. And unlike Tesla, uh, but like most other comp car companies are trying to get the, this technology going, you guys are going to be using lighters, right? Uh, even though there are some limitations to lighters, right? Fog, sandstorms, rain, and so forth. You still believe that is a, a technology that's worth putting into your car uh, to benefit the self-driving uh, technology. Is that, is that correct? Well, obviously, LiDAR is in combination with radar, cameras, and sensors. So we're just enhancing the sensor suite with one more uh, uh, one more item that I think is necessary and that our engineers believe is necessary to, uh, to get to this sort of level of autonomy. Now, you also get to a point now where you say uh, snow and rain and fog. Well, that's exactly the point when you have a fleet of autonomous vehicles that are not in, in privately owned hands, you're able to uh, obviously stop these autonomous shuttles from operating if there's conditions where you feel it's not safe or where they're not able to operate. Whereas if you're handing over a vehicle to somebody who owns it, then you're not really in control on when these people use it or not and how they use it. So that again comes back to how do you deploy these autonomous vehicles? Okay, and so um, for those of my viewers who want to maybe get on the reservation list for the uh, e-motion as it's coming out relatively soon already, um, can you tell me how they can do it? And actually, can you tell me what at this point is your most favorite feature of that car is as a driver? Well, first of all, we, we have our website, of course, uh, www.fiskerinc.com where you can get constant information. Uh, at the moment, you're not able to put uh, uh, any deposits because we had quite a lot of deposits and we have stopped it for a while because we are making some changes like we're talking about with the solid state battery technology to the vehicle um, that we want to first implement before we start taking deposits again. Um, my favorite feature on the vehicle is probably the clean uh, design of, of the body side, which I really like from an aesthetic point of view. Uh, the sculpture that you don't normally see on a four-door uh, sedan like this, a luxury sedan. In terms of the driving features, uh, one of the things we definitely want to make sure of it, this is an exciting car to drive, uh, and it will have a lot of power, handle really well. Uh, so the driving enjoyment, I think, is still going to be important in the future. Excellent. Well, listen, I can talk to you forever about this, and I'm really excited about seeing this car and actually maybe even driving it myself. I, I, seeing it in, in person at CES really, really, I mean, I, I, I was really impressed. So I'm looking forward to that. So uh, the link to the reservation page is going to be in the description of this video. And I encourage everybody, obviously, follow Fisker on uh, any social media you choose. The, the pictures they post and, and videos are, 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 are regular and pretty cool. So, Henrik, thank you so much for joining me. I, I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you soon again. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Well, there you go. If you want to get on that reservation list, only a couple of thousand dollars and you are there. Obviously, you might have to wait until they get that going again. But uh, now that I now that I know and this is the first, I, I didn't realize that maybe I missed it. Maybe this is the first time Henrik is mentioning this. I think this is the first time uh, that uh, the emotion might actually feature the solid state batteries right off the bat in 2020. Now, that would be absolutely amazing. And I really hope they get there. Only more reason to follow them on uh, social media uh, media to see their videos and pictures, uh, to see what the progress is like. That way you're kind of up to date on what's happening with them. So, yeah, I mean, th this was great. I mean, this is something I've been looking forward to for a while now and probably one of the bigger highlights of my channel so far, uh, uh, having Hen uh, Henrik Fisker on. Uh, so, yeah, other than that, uh, see you guys uh, next time. And remember to stay charged.